and it's about time we've discussed Mercury. Probably the least discussed planet in the entire solar system, and as you're going to discover in this video, probably the most misunderstood. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss some of the recent and actually really exciting discoveries about Mercury, but most importantly, its potential origins, which could actually be very different from what we ever thought. It could have been a planet extremely similar to planet Earth, based on a lot of different evidence we have from its surface. Yeah, so that's kind of unexpected. And all of this coming out from some of the recent studies in just the last few months. But first, a little bit more about how we know about all of this, and how we're actually going to be discovering even more in just the next few years. And that's because Mercury, unlike a lot of other planets, because it's so extremely close to the Sun, is also in an extremely difficult position for a lot of space missions. Since it moves so fast around the Sun, because of its orbit being much closer, a typical spacecraft requires a lot more preparation and a lot more fuel in order to assume an orbit around Mercury. And so the only missions that ever visited Mercury are Mariner 10 and the Messenger missions that you see right here. Which basically makes Mercury the least explored inner planet and by extension the least studied and the least understood. But a lot of additional observations seem to reveal to us that there are just too many mysteries here and that it does have to be explored for a lot of different reasons. And so luckily in 2018 JAXA, the Japanese space agency, and ESA, the European one, launched a collaboration known as Bepi Colombo. Basically the most complex mission to Mercury that's going to officially arrive here in December of 2025 with the next major flyby in September of 2024. And the reason it's taking so long is really because of that really high velocity of the planet and because of how difficult it is to place a spacecraft around Mercury. But as of today, it's already conducted three flybys, discovering some really cool stuff in the process, including new craters and conducting new observations, and even conducting a lot of measurements around Mercury, discovering things like, for example, electrons and ions, that confirm the existence of X-ray aurora around Mercury, which basically confirms that all planets in the solar system seem to have aurora. Different types of aurora, but aurora nevertheless. But formed for slightly different reasons. Here though, it's actually only seen in the X-rays through X-ray fluorescence. In some of the previous videos you can find in the description, we also discussed some of the more unusual geological discoveries, including the fact that we now know Mercury is still shrinking and has already shrunk by a few kilometers since its formation, with various features on the surface basically resembling tiny cracks that can only be created through shrinking. And at least one study we've discussed previously has even used the surface boulder calculation, or basically counting boulders on the surface of Mercury, to then compare it to the Moon. And since overall the Moon actually resembles Mercury so much, this was a really interesting study. Here they discovered that Mercury contains 30 times less boulders than the Moon, for reasons that are still not entirely clear, and the initial explanations involved the much harder surface of Mercury, and potentially a lot more conditions that basically destroy these boulders over time, overall this is still a really large difference, suggesting that maybe the surface here is just a little bit younger. We'll come back to this in a few seconds. Here's actually another really cool flyby shot from Bepe Colombo mission taken in 2023. And so during these initial observations, the researchers have started to make some unusual discoveries about additional features that seem to be present only on Mercury. And here's an image of some of these unusual features. We don't really see this anywhere else except for Mercury. Okay, there might be actually one example I'm going to mention briefly on planet Earth, but basically, this right here is really, really strange. And this now has a kind of a, an official name. These are known as the Mercury's Hollows. Very strange, very unusual, sunken regions surrounded by unusually bright halos that were actually first noticed by the Messenger mission back in 2015. And though at first the researchers thought that these were maybe volcanic in nature, they're definitely not, because volcanoes on Mercury also exist and look very different. And so back then when this was discovered, at first the scientists actually couldn't believe this, they even called this, or called Mercury, an impossible planet. But now we kind of understand what's going on here. These unusual hollows, that are very often blue in coloration, 
seem to be formed by sublimation of something underneath this, or basically when solid becomes gas, which then causes the surface to sink, making these basically kind of like really large sinkholes. Which actually reminds me of a story from right here on planet Earth. This is the now famous Batagaika crater that's essentially a huge sinkhole formed by a melting permafrost that's collapsing and growing in size by something like 20 meters per year. And it was actually only discovered in 1991 and since then has grown to really large sizes. It's visible from space. And it's forming these unusual features that will be very different from everything we have on Earth in just the next few decades. And though here on Earth it forms as a result of melting ice, on Mercury this is a result of evaporating ice, which in the process also produces unusual halos. And so these unusual blue formations, surrounded by unknown substances, seem to be the result of very similar effects, where volatiles or ices underneath escape and basically turn into something else. But here they seem to be correlated with the low reflectance regions across Mercury, regions containing a lot of magnesium, calcium and sulfur. So there's maybe something else involved here that we just don't understand. But the main reason this matters is because this should have been gone long time ago. All of these gases and volatiles should not have existed here for billions of years. Yet here they are. These hollows are actually kind of recent. And this is possibly still going on even today, suggesting that Mercury underneath the surface potentially contains huge deposits of different types of ices. This whole planet is potentially very rich in volatiles, and the reason it shrunk is because many of these volatiles escaped over time. And we actually know that this is still going on even today for one simple reason. And you can see this reason in this image. The image by Dr. Sebastian Voltmer. This is the Mercury's sodium tail. It makes Mercury kind of look like a comet. And all of this is formed by evaporating sodium that's also actually coming from within. Which basically makes Mercury appear just a little bit orange from the outside or maybe even by standing on the surface. We don't really see this here because this is just a simulation, but that's kind of implied from the observations by NASA. It also has a lot of other stuff like calcium evaporating as well producing a tail that's violet in color. And so overall, by standing on the surface, the overall exosphere might appear kind of purplish. But these detections and these observations, including other elements like sulfur, chloride, sodium, potassium, and actually a lot of others, basically suggest that a lot of these volatiles are coming from subsurface regions, hinting at a kind of a huge deposit underneath. The deposit that technically should not exist there because if Mercury was formed where it's currently located, none of these elements should have been present there in such quantities. It's just a little bit too close to the Sun in order to have a lot of these volatiles deposited underneath. And interestingly, one of the recent studies that you can find in the description analyzed the presence of these volatiles and compared them to what we have on Earth in regions like Atacama Desert in Chile. And they actually surprisingly seem very similar. But a lot of these extreme conditions in Chile that contain extremely salty and extremely dry environments are also known as a residence for some of the strangest extremophiles on the planet. Or basically a lot of these niches contain some of the strangest bacteria we've ever seen anywhere. And they actually exist in Atacama Desert even at depths of several meters. Several major discoveries in the last few years revealed a lot of volatiles underneath the desert that contain different organisms surviving and actually thriving in these somewhat extreme conditions. Conditions that scientists believe are extremely similar to what we have underneath Mercury. Thus, to some extent, implying that we need to study this more because, yeah, there could be life there. And so basically these salt glaciers on Mercury present perfect conditions for extreme life. Especially because they probably contain halides or a type of a mineral containing a lot of salt which can technically make water liquid. And so a lot of these very recent studies suddenly make Mercury a really exciting planet for a potential discovery of some kind of a subsurface life, at least in theory. But that's not even the most exciting study from the last few months. There is something else about Mercury that we still don't understand. Why does it have all of this? Why is Mercury still shrinking? Why is this there? And so yeah, why, why, why? And the best answer is so far that most scientists kind of are tackling right now is basically migration or planetary migration, which most likely brought Mercury from somewhere else 
would the transfer itself very likely be the result of some kind of a cataclysm. And so here we go. New study, new exciting discoveries from once again here on planet Earth. And so first of all, today we believe that early on in the solar system, there was definitely a lot of planetary migration. And a lot of it very likely resulted in different collisions, including the one that formed the moon around Earth. But when terrestrial planets were forming, the ones slightly on the outskirts very likely received more volatiles. And so we have Venus that very likely received the least, Earth that received quite a lot and was able to keep quite a lot because it was relatively massive, Mars very likely had a lot too, but seems to have lost all of it because it lost magnetosphere and because there's basically just not enough mass and because it just doesn't have enough gravity to keep everything. And then we have Mercury. Mercury has a lot of volatiles, but it seems to be closer than Venus. And so the only explanation for these unusual salt glaciers and these volatiles is if it was formed close to Mars. But more importantly, because we know Mercury still has a magnetosphere, unlike a lot of other terrestrial planets, it also seems to have a really large core, actually much, much larger than Mars. And because of this large core, some scientists started to speculate maybe Mercury was much larger. And maybe the only reason it is where it is today is because back in the days, we don't really know when, it received some kind of a large collision that essentially did two things. It dramatically changed its orbit moving it much, much closer to the sun, but second, stripped a lot of its upper layers, removing a lot of crust and even mantle, leaving behind a really large core and just a little bit of mantle on top. And a lot of this is really based on many anomalies observed on the surface, the ones I mentioned, but also some other ones as well. For example, there's just way too much thorium. Compared to a lot of other planets, including actually planet Earth, it seems to contain just as much thorium as Mars which kind of implies that it might have formed in a similar location to Mars, because otherwise thorium would have evaporated because of the extreme proximity to the Sun. This is actually based on observations of potassium to thorium ratio, which we know serves as a really good indicator of where these planets might have come from. And so to try to solve some of these mysteries, the scientists behind this recent study that you can find in the description basically focused on a volcanic rock, a somewhat rare volcanic rock, a mineral known as Boninite, named after the original place where it was discovered in the Bonin Islands. And this is a volcanic rock usually very rich in magnesium and silica, but very poor in a lot of other elements. And surprisingly, there's actually a deposit of this somewhere on Cyprus. And so the main researcher behind the study, Nicola Murray, was able to collect some of these rocks in Cyprus and compare them to what we see on Mercury. And surprisingly, what we're seeing here seems to be practically identical to what we see on Mercury, in terms of different mixtures of elements such as magnesium, aluminium and iron. With the only difference being that here it's oxidized because we have oxygen in the atmosphere, on Mercury it's not. But in terms of everything else, they seem to be identical, making this location in Cyprus basically the first ever terrestrial analog to what we see on Mercury that can actually help us understand its geology. But I guess even more importantly, because we know that this formed approximately 90 million years ago as a result of a very specific collision of tectonic plates, the very similar formations on Mercury were very likely produced by similar volcanic eruptions and thus suggest that Mercurian magmas seem to be unusually close to the surface as if the upper mantle was stripped and as if the planet was potentially much larger before. Or in other words, this kind of maybe confirms the idea that Mercury was a much larger planet before, with a large part of the crust blown away by some kind of a collision. Which once again would explain why it has so many volatiles, why the core of Mercury is so big, and why of course it has such a large deposit of thorium. But as always, at least for now these are just assumptions and different types of propositions, or basically this is just a hypothesis, and we're not going to know more until maybe 2026 to 2028, until baby Colombo gets here and until it actively starts to scan the surface of Mercury, potentially discovering more things in the process. And so by 2026, 2028, we might finally see Mercury in an entirely different way and most importantly, it might actually become the most exciting planet in the solar system, way more exciting than Mars and maybe even Venus because of these underground deposits and because of a potential chance to maybe find life here as well. And so until these future discoveries and future studies, at least for now, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe, 
share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.